Thank you all and uh, the ones that will come later, I hope. This is a, a new edition of a talk that I gave in this site uh, probably two times. The last time was with Dr. Willison. They said, do we need to advance uh, the collection of data and come up with more definitive conclusions? So this is the way to come to that stage of possible definitive conclusions. Let's start saying why it's so important or exciting in my fantasy or imagination uh, <coughs> to talk and clarify what is transient Takatsubo cardiomyopathy, TTC. That is, in my perception, the most exciting a dramatic, uh, amazing uh, change in the function of the heart that we were seeing in uh, <clears throat> cardiology, especially before and after the critical time of 1990. In 1990, it was when we came to identify a name to call a condition that was confused and amazing, but not clear, with the name of Takatsubo, a Japanese name to say Ampula, demonstrate its uh, <coughs> production and its uh, recurrent camps, and go over everything we know to introduce the final offer a sort of preliminary conclusion to introduce the need or not need for a, a study they would like to ask your opinion on at the end of the presentation. To start, uh, and some of you may not have seen ever a case of uh, transit apical Takatsubo cardiomyopathy, but this is what you see in the, <clears throat> in the left ventricular angiography uh, that was started to be used in these cases in 1985 when uh, the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association, advised the need uh, to do acute, uh, urgent, emer emergence uh, heart catheterization patients with acute myocardial infarction. Because the presentation of these cases is usually mixed or confusing with the uh, acute myocardial infarction of the typical uh, coronary artery disease, uh, atherosclerotic, of uh, many uh, patients. What we see in patients, they come to the hospital with uh, uh, acute myocardial infarction symptoms is mainly demonstrated by a left ventricular angiography, a catheter in the main pumping chamber that shows uh, that Part of the heart moves hyperactively, uh, very well uh, contractile, while the apex, uh, that is in this case quite different than the usual myocardial infarction, is showing a ballooning. Uh, more than half of the uh, distal part of the ventricle, or it could be up to this section of the left ventricle. We will see a few cases to show the extent in different presentations, but the heart that before, in a, a day before, was normally contracting to this size becomes ballooning, expanding, with uh, not only lack of oxygen of uh, function, uh, sort of a um, paralysis, but also with uh, thinning because the apex that is now. Uh, showing a, a circumference in this part that is more than double the original, is th three or four times. It's very thin, and uh, the thickness of the wall from 8 to 12 millimeters goes down to about 4 or 5. So it's very thin, and that may cause problems. But in uh, histology or uh, by MRI, uh, LGE, is a mode to see a scar, doesn't show much of a, a irreversible damages like in acute myocardial infarction, typically contraction bands and necrosis, uh, 
and exceptionally in a late study by MRI, you can see irreversible scars. There is a, a within a month a recur recovery of left ventricular function. Typically, a patient uh, that was previously asymptomatic, not a cardiological patient, uh, develops the symptoms and the first critical event is in an environment that is not monitored. So most of the time, we don't know exactly when it started or uh, how did it uh, occur. Definitely, this is a critical important stage because a mortality of about 5% of this disease occurs at home and there is no uh, demonstration because autopsy will not show uh, the result of uh, Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. Even an autopsy done in a few hours since the onset will show a normal muscle and a normal uh, volume. This uh, apical <laughs> balloon dilatation is not seen at autopsy. In the past, uh, when Dr. Robert Leachman was here, and a few of you may have met him, the, he would call this condition that we knew very well, uh, left ventricular infarction or acute myocardiopathy with normal coronary arteries. Takatsubo is a name that is interesting but is not really revealing the cause or the nature. In this case that we showed before in left ventricular angiography, the follow-up is shown here very obviously. This heart is now <clears throat> normal in size and thickness. There is no scar by MRI. It's a total return to normal. The typical findings clinically are chest pain. 80% of the patients start with chest pain as the main symptom, but not all of them. Dyspnea, weakness, faintiness, hypotension, cold sweating. Basically, the EKG and the symptoms of an acute myocardial infarction. Many of these patients are reported in the literature in absence of more substantial uh, data as having had uh, some stress in the days or weeks or exact time of the onset of the symptoms. And so the typical name that is given to this disease in the general press is stress cardiomyopathy. Troponin elevation is a more substantial change, but is mild, and is present in almost all of the patients with Takatsubo by definition. Troponin Elevation increases gradually over the first few hours. It's peaking around 12 hours since onset of symptoms, while the BNP is a sign of uh, uh, fluid retention occurs uh, uh, 12 hours or more later. At the end, there is a, a, a ratio of BNP divided by troponin that is uh, quite useful to make a diagnosis of probability of non-compact of um, Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. So this is a very important uh, testing to do. Another name that is given to this condition is uh, catecholamines uh, cardiomyopathy. And this is uh, wrong in my appreciation and uh, judgment, uh, but is uh, de facto never controlled by catecholamine serum levels because nobody really believes that this is the main uh, cause of uh, acute cardiomyopathy in these patients. And uh, if there is a high level of uh, catecholamines in this patient, it's mainly after the onset of the event because the patient is so acutely sick. Echocardiography is the most uh, relevant uh, and immediate, uh, immediately available. Uh, you see the arrow there, yes. The most available uh, appreciation of where is the problem in echocardiography very clearly uh, 
can see apical cardiomyopathy or mid cardiomyopathy or other kind of uh, uh, distribution of the damage and uh, we will see that in uh, another slide. The occurrence in uh, 1990 of the knowledge leading to the uh, publication of a name uh, in uh, the context of a few cases of uh, Takatsuba is the fact that uh, this necessity of doing emergency catheterization was finally established only at this time and at that time a lot of patients were shown to have normal coronary arteries at the time of an acute event. So the syndrome became quite interesting and quite surprising, amazing. The main uh, direction of my, um, since 1985, is many years uh, of investigation on this condition, is uh, by acetylcholine testing because uh, acetylcholine testing has the capacity potentially of revealing the mechanism, making a strong case for the diagnosis of the entity and the cause of the entity that I think is spasm, coronary artery narrowing with uh, acute severe ischemia leading to maintain uh, uh, stunning of the myocardium. After a prolonged ischemia for more than 15 minutes, total ischemia causes stunning the remains, uh, decrease in function of the heart that remains. The shorter is the time, the shorter is the time of persistence of uh, stunning, but usually between one week or four weeks, the heart returns to normal. So as a decoding testing, I timidly uh, started using it in a few patients that were very sick and very, very disturbing and uh, nebulous in its uh, cause and prognosis and treatment. Acetylcholine testing is a test that reproduces, and we didn't know before we started using acetylcholine, reproduces Takatsubo and the mechanism, spasm. So it's a very important test that has the fantastic capacity of actually reproducing the disease. The reason why acetylcholine testing has never become very popular in the cardiology circles is that usually people will say that we know that Takasuko cardiomyopathy is caused by catecholamines, we don't need the acetylcholine test. Or acetylcholine test is dangerous during an acute uh, cardiomyopathy like Takasugo. In general, at this time, acetylcholine testing, even in uh, tertiary centers, academic centers, is rarely done. In the past, uh, since 1985 I started doing this, I would get about two, three patients' referrals a month, and in the hospital we'll have six to 10 cases a month. At this time, I don't see any more referrals, and nobody studied by acetylcholine because people think that is not important and not uh, an unknown in medicine. Additionally, there is a, an issue of uh, acetylcholine presentation. Acetylcholine was never approved for this testing. It was approved only for ophthalmological testing or uh, treatment and uh, is available only in this form that is uh, not very convenient for in the cath lab of 20 milligrams in 10 cc's, very concentrated, very high dosage. And it takes about three or four uh, progressive dilution to get to the proper a quantity of uh, 100 micrograms per 10 cc's that we need in a cath lab. In general, what we came to uh, clarify that acetylcholine testing is quite specific, it's quite uh, clear that uh, shows spasm, 
but also reproduction of left ventricular dysfunction if we do the test after the initial time of uh, uh, recovery. It is something that is positive only in the first week after the onset of Takatsugo. It doesn't remain positive unless the patient has a very high level of predisposing factors that we're going to discuss. Also, recently we have published extensive evidence that if you have uh, atherosclerotic coronary arteries with the thickening of the intima and uh, typically the hardening of the coronary arteries, you will not have spasm. There may be uh, spas uh, contraction of the smooth muscles, but not narrowing of the lumen because there is no physical possibility that the force of contraction of the smooth muscles uh, can reduce the lumen. So there is a, an important limitation in the, uh, both the, the capacity of provoking spasm in all the patients with this test, but especially there is a question of why males have only one-ninth of the probability of having Takatsuba than females, and uh, at a younger age uh, in female than in male, or in males uh, basically after 75, 80 years of age, you don't see any more Takatsuba. The details on the acetylcholine testing it comes from the nature of what is this, this acetylcholine is a, a natural uh, peripheral and central neurotransmitter. No one has studied if indeed uh, at the time of Takasugo there is a, an activation or increased uh, production of acetylcholine. It is possible that acetylcholine is actually the mediator of the acute event, but we don't know yet uh, if it is true. In uh, acetylcholine is used also in any other uh, manifestation of spasm, abnormal spasm in the coronary arteries, especially in prismatal angina. In uh, uh, these cases, uh, is uh, related to a specific site in the coronary artery, typically in the proximal left anterior descending artery, at myocardial bridging, or in ectopic coronary arteries, a congenital anomalies. Uh, it's diffused. Uh, acetylcholine activates both nicotinic and muscarinic uh, uh, fibers in the heart. And muscarinic are the ones that act uh, on spasm. The time of action of acetylcholine is only 15 to 30 seconds, so it's quite reversible, and uh, the test has to be done very quickly and obviously in the presence availability, immediate availability of nitroglycerin, which is demonstrated without any doubt as very effective in a few seconds in relieving the spasm caused by acetylcholine. In all the patients that produced the spasm, we gave nitroglycerin routinely and in all of them, the spasm disappeared. To give an idea of what we are here in, uh, in this institution, we have done <coughs> acetylcholine in about 140 patients in the last 20 years, and mostly in prismatal angina before year 2000. Then in uh, ANOCA, there is uh, angina in normal coronary arteries, so no obstructive coronary arteries. Minoka, that is my myocardial infarction with no obstructive coronary arteries, and finally in Takatsubo. We used also this according to an IRB protocol in 30 control cases that were poor risk of spasm that we did for a control, and all of these patients were normal, who did not develop spasm. In general, in prismatal engine, it depends on how good you are as a clinician and how diligent you are in getting data of especially ST elevation or depression during acute events. But it's about 70% of 50 cases were done in the last 20 years 
of pre-metal angina, transient uh, spasm, that uh, the, the test is positive. In uh, Takatsubo cardiomyopathy, we probably used it in about 60 cases, but uh, now we came up with the conclusion that it was too late in the majority of the cases, in 50% uh, of these 60 cases, it was done after one week, and most of those patients will have a negative uh, acetylcholine even if they had spasm at the beginning because they don't have uh, uh, any more liability to develop spasm after an initial phase uh, that is apparently a very interesting event that suggests that there is a sort of an out of vaccinations of the patients after the first uh, experience of uh, Takatsubo. The recurrence is rare. Side effects, to give you an idea, because this is such an important test, we didn't have any deaths in spite of handling very seriously sick patients. Uh, advanced bradycardia is the most frequent uh, side effect of uh, acetylcholine, but it's short-acting. Uh, typically is uh, uh, the reason for using a temporary uh, protective uh, pacemaker. But uh, in no case of this uh, spastic uh, event uh, caused in the cath lab, we saw acute myocardial infarction, shock or, or, or death. There are two exceptions. In one case, uh, we studied a patient that was studied in five different uh, centers specialized in spasm, in uh, normal coronary arteries with the signs of ischemia. And we did this uh, as the fifth uh, operator. And during acetylcholine testing, we saw the presentation of both of chest pain, EKG changes, but not spasm. And in this patient, we clarified by intervascular ultrasound that this was a case of uh, intraluminar platelet aggregation with uh, uh, white uh, clots that were removed uh, with uh, an aspiration uh, catheter. The patient developed a small myocardial infarction and uh, he had, she had uh, 13 previous uh, scars by um, MRI, but since uh, we started the use of Prasugrel, which is an antiplatelet, uh, anticoagulant, that works very well in uh, patients with the stents, but is, in this case is used to prevent platelet aggregation. And in this patient, for three years, she never had any more spells. Uh, this is a typical case, uh, besides the one that, that we showed in which uh, the patient did not accept to, to do a, an acetylcholine test. This is a patient that was older, 85, had uh, uh, chronic asthma attacks, uh, used uh, albuterol uh, frequently, had a syncope of spells uh, six months before the presentation she had uh, a catheterization because of a spontaneous angina at rest, and she was found to have normal coronary arteries. So the hospital where she was uh, admitted initially had a normal EKG and decided to do what is called uh, a dobutamine stress test. A dobutamine stress test caused uh, what you see here, a dramatic ST elevation like a, a transmural myocardial infarction uh, that is very dramatic and exp ex expansive, uh, diffuse. And she was uh, not responding to nitroglycerin in spite of not having uh, obvious uh, narrowing of the coronary arteries. And this was a center where they didn't have much experience in spasm and uh, uh, the patient was uh, transferred to us for possible intervention, thinking that it was a coronary artery, new onset of uh, a more extensive disease than previously. The nuclear imaging, uh, uh, complicated by chest pain and ST changes, showed that at baseline before dobutamine, the heart had normal 
uh, nutrition of the heart muscle, but uh, after the butamine, the apex was cut off, had uh, total ischemia. It is a very difficult test to see, but when you see it, it's very obvious that there's a spasm. The fact is that this patient came and uh, had another angiogram. They show some diffuse, narrowing, mild as plucking, but nothing serious. With the ejection fraction of this time of 45%, it was much lower initially in the other hospital. When we did the acetylcholine 100 uh, micrograms over one minute, <coughs> the arteries of the left coronary arteries diffusely and severely, basically all the coronary flow was compromised and uh, immediate usage of nitroglycerin immediately relieved everything and the patient returned to better than baseline. This is what uh, was seen by echocardiography. The baseline was mild uh, apical hypokinesia with uh, um, this is during the acetylcholine test, 100 micrograms. The apex goes basically to akinesia and the ejection fraction and end diastolic volume increase, typical of substantial changes since the baseline. But with nitroglycerin, everything basically improves to better than baseline. This is another kind of the same disease. It's a patient that also had uh, unusual symptoms and uh, Prince metal angina, localized spasm typically, is very contiguous with trans uh, transient Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. In this patient, the akinesia, this is in systole, this is in diastole, it's only in the midsection. The apex, the apex, this portion of the ventricle contracts normally. It, it, it goes to the normal uh, um, contractile state, but this part is akinetic and is surprising and indicates a, a need for explanation. And this was the explanation in this case. The patient had a baseline pretty normal coronary arteries, mild uh, irregularity of the initial portion of the left anterior descending and circumflex. But after night intracoronary acetylcholine, the severity of the obstruction of these branches and these in intraceptal branches and lateral branches is obvious and severe, while the anterior portion of uh, the left anterior descending is basically maintained and diffused, uh, narrowing but not total occlusion is observed in the LAD that is fairly normal. So the uh, implication in this, uh, uh, in this patient is that when there is atherosclerosis of significance, you prevent spasm, but not in small vessels, uh, typically interceptal vessels, where the um, probability of causing spasm is maintained because of lack of significant atherosclerotic buildup. This is another, one of the most severe cases I ever saw. A patient, 47-year-old uh, Afro-American, they had fights with the husband in the, at home. At a certain point, uh, she had chest pain, uh, syncope, and was taken to the hospital, and there was treated like an acute infarction with the left ventricular angiography that shows very severe, is more than apical balloon, is mint and apical uh, akinesia, ejection fraction of 18%. And uh, when she was sent to us, she was sent with these angiograms, uh, that showed uh, no significant coronary disease, but uh, a little lesion at the end of the left anterior descending. But look what happened with the 50 micrograms, is a low dosage of uh, uh, acetylcholine, a total occlusion of the left anterior descending and the uh, obtuse marginal branches. <coughs> 
this, if it lasts more than 30, 60 seconds, is not survivable. It causes sudden death. But immediate uh, intracoronary nitroglycerin not only increases the blood pressure from 60, 70 to 120, but uh, reestablishes the normal uh, baseline coronary patency. So this is a serious disease and can be treated. The last example is a case of a 55-year-old male who had a history of an acute myocardial infarction at home with the shock, he was taken to the hospital with massaging. He could not re re recover blood pressure before being admitted to the intensive care units and eventually to the cat lab. At the beginning in the first presentation, he had a, a selected coronary angiography only of the left coronary artery during massage, and, and that was interpreted as a, a case of a, a total occlusion of the left main and sent to surgery for recanalization. They put, without looking at the right coronary artery, uh, they put two uh, bypasses, vein grafts uh, to the left side and one to the right. And the patient was referred to us <clears throat> because after six months he continued to have chest pains and it was not clear what it was. And as you see here with the acetylcholine testing, all the coronary arteries occlude, while baseline, the left main is open and it fills from retrograde flow from the bypasses. And uh, the total occlusion of all the left coronary branches was immediately resolved by nitroglycerin. So it's a dramatic presentation. Again, at the border of Prince Metalangina, recurrent uh, syndrome with bypasses, evidently this is not the treatment. Let's go now quickly about what can we do uh, further. Uh, in conclusion, Takatsubo is uh, caused most likely and essentially by severe and diffuse coronary spasm. There is the end mechanism of something that is more complex. It's much, more, much worse of the localized spasm uh, of uh, Prince Metal Angina, typically in the proximal part of the left anterior descending. The myocardial st stunning is the result of prolonged, more than 15 minutes long occlusion, and uh, <clears throat> it disappears only in three to 30 days. We have recently seen a patient that had the chance to see ST elevation, myocardial infarction type of EKG, uh, resolving immediately with nitroglycerin in the office of a colleague of mine, an oncologist, that eventually uh, showed that he ha had a, a resolvable Takatsubo, uh, but it took three days for the left ventricle to recover in, sp in place of the few minutes after a total occlusion revascularized with a stent. In general, uh, we talked already about uh, uh, the coronary artery disease complicating the clinical manifestation of spasm in this patient and the reason why males have much less frequently um, Takatsubo than female. Uh, we can talk about uh, what is microvascular dysfunction that is frequently mentioned by uh, some authors in Takatsubo. Microvascular dysfunction is related to spasm and is uh, uh, re reproducible by acetylcholine and is especially seen in the septal branches. This is uh, to visualize in your imagination what is the, the relevance of having coronary atherosclerotic buildup even without stenosis versus no buildup of atherosclerosis. Small vessels typically are not affected by this yellow stuff, uh, lipids and uh, calcium, but uh, with acetylcholine, you can reproduce spasm 
in the proximal epicardial vessels and the small branches like the septals, while acetylcholine in these patients will only cause a spasm of the small branches that are not affected by atherosclerosis. So we need to separate the presence of uh, uh, predisposing factors that we call endothelial dysfunction, the tendency to have spontaneous spasm, and pre a precipitating factor. And uh, uh, catecholamines can well, very well be the cause of precipitation in patients predisposed by endothelial dysfunction that can be proven with acetylcholine testing. In the presence of endothelial dysfunction, uh, many different stimuli or events in the life of a patient can precipitate a, a, an event. The side effects, just to uh, well, we already talked about that. This is a list, of, uh, a picture of the different kind of uh, um, Takatsubo. The typical is middle and apical uh, segment of the heart going into um, akinesia, uh, lack of function. Uh, when there is only in the middle part uh, with preservation of the apical, they call it uh, mid-ventricular. Basal could be a, a, a non-compaction cardiomyopathy, in a case of uh, Takatsubo, only in the presence of severe atherosclerosis of the other vessels, especially the right coronary artery. Basal is unusual. The focal also, when there is only akinesia of a segment, you need to either exclude uh, Takatsubo or to assume that there is atherosclerosis with thickening hardening of the arteries and the rest of the um, arteries besides the left anterior descending. Biventricular is basically the same as the apical, but involving also the right ventricle. But this is the proportion of uh, the different kind of uh, Takatsubo in the largest uh, collections, these registries. This is in Switzerland, this is in Germany. And uh, this is in Italy and in, in uh, Spain. Most of the patients have this type of uh, apical or mid, but especially apical. 80 to 90 percent of the patients are the typical ca case. During the recent pandemic of COVID-19, we had uh, initial reports, especially at the Cleveland Clinic in the network of hospitals in Cleveland, they looked at the incidence of Takatsubo before and after uh, the onset of Takatsubo of uh, COVID-19 and found that Takatsubo was present in 7.8% of the patients admitted with the acute coronary syndrome in the ICU and the cath lab versus 17% there was the incidence of this disease in the year before. This was only in the two months after the onset of the pandemic. So it looks like COVID-19 has a capacity of inducing endothelial dysfunction and eventually increasing the probability of having Takatsubo. Here in town, I don't know. Now I don't see any more patients refer for Takatsubo, and most of the patients uh, with uh, COVID-19 are taken care by pulmonologists, and they don't do echocardiograms, and the patients die for some reason. Some of them are from uh, Takatsubo. But if you go to the uh, reports, uh, the most sophisticated reports in uh, autopsies, you see that frequently there is small vessel total occlusion, in this case by megokaryocytes, a large vessel, large uh, uh, cells that are released abnormally from the bone marrow and go into small arteries and eventually cause a, an acute infarction of small size. This is another of these uh, um, megokaryocytes in a small capillary and you see also that the endothelium is quite affected. This is almost uh, necrotic. Uh, 
the same uh, in uh, <coughs> the lungs, uh, uh, in routine uh, um, autopsies. You see many sites of total occlusion or small vessels by fibrinous uh, uh, clots. But this is to summarize what we think at this time is Takatsubo and how it changes in time. This is in the case of COVID-19 pandemia patients, patients affected by a viral infection, which is the dark uh, blue line, that initially are infected but uh, free of any problems of coronary spasm or uh, Takatsubo hypokinesia of the heart, but eventually uh, the um, intermittent li line uh, called ED, endothelial dysfunction, starts to uh, be demonstrably uh, abnormal. And uh, anyway, the, at this time, about uh, eight days uh, since onset of uh, contagion, uh, the endothelial dysfunction gets to a point that we call the level liability to spasm threshold, where anything that happens, it could be uh, catecholamine release, inflammatory uh, stimuli, causes what is called the spast spastic occlusion of coronary arteries that eventually causes Takatsubo. And in this case, the left ventricular dysfunction, that is the uh, green light, has a plateau, two or three days maximum, in which remains akinetic and then gradually resolves. And within a week, usually the left ventricle is recovered. And this time is when you have the best chances to cause uh, with acetylcholine test an acute uh, recurrence, uh, reproduction of the syndrome, that eventually with nitroglycerin in a few minutes or less uh, recovers. If it don't allow, uh, allow the patient to be scheming for more than a few seconds or 30 seconds, the left ventricular recovery is total and the left ventricle goes back to normal in 15, 20 days in terms of uh, acetylcholine testing. So this is a theory that has been, if not accepted, approved for publications and has been discussed and on the basis of uh, this and further evidence and interest in the general world of Takatsubo experts, we came up with the hypothesis that we could, in the soon future, apply what is called uh, new technology available now uh, called proteomics, prote 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 which is uh, a study of the proteins and the activity of the genes uh, that goes to uh, show and implies that uh, there is a, a stimulus in many diseases that leads to a new gene expression and eventually a new protein that causes a new cl clinical entity. Most likely uh, Takatsubo has this uh, capacity but we don't know exactly what it is, but there is now uh, this new technology, whole proteome profiling, uh, that can be non-targeted in a general population with respect to a general population that is not affected by the same disease, or it could be uh, targeted. In this case, is much more likely to be able to show a difference in the level of uh, uh, proteins, new proteins, and new gene uh, um, activity. So this is what we are trying to propose and study in terms of cost organization. This is a rare disease. A few patients are seen in any single centers. You need to put together many centers with a coordinated plan and uh, protocols to be able to come to conclusions. This is a typical example of this type of studies. These are genes activated during COVID-19 versus uh, influenza virus. Some of the genes uh, are common and some of the genes are different and identify the uh, diseases. Uh, 
In the past, <clears throat> only in 2011, some authors, uh, Bang and collaborators, in 2011, uh, showed uh, the results of a similar study, a little primitive, but uh, in uh, apical ballooning syndrome, uh, they assumed that the problem in Takatsubo was related to occlusion of bran branches, uh, uh, probably as a, a, an explanation of endothelial dysfunction, and they studied fibrinogen and fibrin data uh, and uh, found some potentially significant difference between apical ballooning on in nine patients versus myocardial infarction versus normal population. Few patients, wrong uh, proteins, and uh, it was a negative study, but the uh, idea was good and needs to be uh, advanced. The last two slides to tell you what we are planning and uh, proposing to the general medical audience uh, worldwide. We sent initial <coughs> request of collaboration to people in uh, the States, in Europe, and in Japan. And we have preliminary support, uh, but a lot of questions. Basically, what we would like to uh, know is uh, um, if or not we could uh, produce a study of this complexity in uh, our hospital. Uh, probably 250 patients so it would be an excellent and adequate uh, initial population to study for uh, uh, a diagnosis and admission of probable or possible uh, Takatsubo. Uh, we consider 250 total cases, uh, probably 200 would be positive acetylcholine and real Takatsubo, but uh, the other uh, would be negative uh, cases uh, and uh, negative acetylcholine test. But doing the test in uh, these cases at onset, uh, an admission, and uh, three months after follow-up will be likely uh, capable of reaching these uh, four conclusions to clarify the mechanism of Takatsubo, to propose a new acute diagnost diagnostic means that doesn't require acetylcholine, as you can uh, find in the blood uh, proteins or gene activations uh, markers, suggest acute and chronic treatment more pointed to the um, cause and uh, more able to allow for reliable follow-up by blood testing and not by uh, any other testing, invasive or non-invasive, and uh, to clarify the incidence of recurrence and uh, how to treat it more effectively. At this point, uh, we'll be able to ask for some questions.